So this is an instructional video on how to operate the HPLC for the analytical lab determination of caffeine and sodium benzoate concentrations in an unknown Department of Chemistry University of Cincinnati. So HPLC stands for High Performance Liquid Chromatography. It's a fluidic system. As you can see, the HPLC consists of three components. This is the power, the diode array, and the pump. So it is a fluidic system where the mobile phase here is piped through the injection port where it picks up your analyte. The analyte is then separated on the column and the separated analytes are then analyzed with your diode array. So to get started first, let's turn the instrument on. You go from top to bottom. with the pump being turned on last. The next thing we want to do, since it is a fluidic system, we want to make sure there's no air in the lines. The way we do this is as such. First, you want to make sure that there's flow by turning the pump on. You can then see the flow and the pressure. The next thing you want to do is open this up and hit purge. However, before we do that, we want to make sure we're purging the right lines. We have four lines, A, B, C, and D. For this lab, we'll only be using A. <clears throat> to change which pump, which line is pumping, you have to hit manual and then choose B as zero, enter, C as zero, enter, enter, and then we can change our flow rate to one milliliter a minute, enter, enter, enter. Now you can see that we're running 100% A. <coughs> Excuse me. Next thing you do is you hit the purge button. This jumps the flow up to 10 milliliters a minute. Depending on how much mobile phase you have, you can let it run for a while to make sure that all the lines are purged of air. And if you're running a gradient for a different lab, you'd have to change the concentration, the percent of a mobile phase running through each line and purge each line, A, B, C, or D. So then to stop it, you hit purge again. Tighten this back up. and you can see your pressure's climbing back now. One thing with this instrument, if it's been sitting a while, sometimes you'll get pressure fluctuation. Um, I found the way to fix this is just by cracking this open, letting the pressure drop, turning it back on, letting it build up. If you do that one or two times, usually the pressure will build up and stabilize. If, if you do that and you can't um, get the pressure to stabilize, seek some assistance from someone who can help you. So next we want to set up our method. To do this we open Easy Chrome Elite. Then through the diode array detector and the password is Hitachi. So this opens the software and usually it'll open up with uh, the last thing that was that was ran so we just want to close these out and start anew all right so go to file method new so there's only three tabs we're concerned about the pump the dial array and the trigger so for this lab, we usually run 10 minutes long, but I think if we vary the flow rate, we could probably cut this down. But for this video, let's just set it at 10 minutes. So start time zero, end time is 10. Uh, we're running 100% A, so all you have to do is hit zero in B because everything subtracts from A. Then the flow rate, we're running at one milliliter a minute. 
and then event we want it on and then off so that's basically all you have to do if you want to run a shorter time limit you would adjust it here uh, if you're running for a different lab and you do use different concentrations of mobile phase maybe with uh, more than one line you would change it all right here so next is our diode array you want to make sure that the time is the same as the pump time so we've got a time minute uh, time in minutes of 10 minutes so we want to change this to 10 minutes since it's the caffeine sodium benzoate lab their absorbances are between 200 and 300 so we want to change this to 205 which is the lower limit I believe and we can change this to just 325 would be fine none of this gets changed the next is the trigger you want to put this as external since we're using an external injection port so once you have that set up then you go to file method save as well if I can get it save as and we'll just save it on the desktop it's Kim 3030 lab method. You can name it whatever you want. Then hit save. So now that we have our method, you want to make sure that the instrument and the computer are talking to each other. So you can see here that the method that is loaded is Kim 3030 lab method. So what you want to do is go to Control, Download Method. <clears throat> what this does, it tells, the computer tells the instrument what to do and establishes communication between them. Next, for a single run, we just hit the blue arrow here, single run. You would type the sample ID. So for the first run, let's just call it caffeine. The method that we're going to be using is the one we just created and saved it on the desktop. So it's Chem 3030 lab method. And then the data path is wherever you want to save your data. So normally we have a, a folder on the desktop for whichever semester we're using. So for the last semester was spring 2014. And for all the professors that was teaching in here, we got Professor Vonderheide. So we'll just save it in group three. So you can change this for each group that's using the instrument. So just hit OK. Then you hit Start. This will bring up a chromatogram, and you'll have a command line here that says Equilibrating Method. What you want to do is you want to wait until this changes and starts flashing, waiting for trigger. So see, it's, it's waiting for trigger. Now the instrument is in a, uh, is in a stasis waiting, waiting for, the, uh, for the injection to start. So next we have to inject our analyte. This is the injection port. You can see that it's in the load position. It's up. It's two positions, load and inject. Inject is down. There's a 20 microliter injection loop. So even if you're using a 100 microliter syringe to inject, you cannot overfill the sample loop. It's only going to hold 20 microliters. The one thing you want to make sure is that if your students are using a 25 microliter Hamilton to make sure that they inject 20 microliters because if they inject less if there's air bubbles in here you can get air bubbles in your system and we don't want that so all you do just draw up your analyte here this is about 50 microliters insert it and then push it in and you can feel that there'll be a slight resistance depress the plunger and then turn it down.
as you can see now, it says running sample. Whereas before it was waiting for trigger. And here is our UV trace. So it's very important that they do those steps in sequence else they might uh, screw up the starting of the instrument. So this is a chromatogram showing both the caffeine and the sodium benzoate peaks. So as you can notice, I let it ran, run out to seven. Our, um, our actual limit is 10 minutes, but I stopped it at seven. Once you know where the peaks come off of, come off in your chromatogram, you can stop it. So this cuts down on mobile phase and, uh, and you know, it, it shortens the length of time that they have, you and uh, students have to be in lab. So here you can see the sodium benzoate, there's only two things, 500 part per million caffeine and 500 part per million sodium benzoate. Once the sodium benzoate comes off, you know it comes off before 3.30, so you can stop the run at 4 or 4.30 or even 5. You want to make sure you run through it at some length though, like here I let it run to 7, just to make sure this isn't some contamination in your sample. But um, if you only got two things in your, uh, you only have two analytes in the system and you only see two peaks, then that's normally what you're going to get. So next we want to do is we want to analyze them. So here you go to analyze, analysis, and then analyze. This gives you your area and your retention time. So we want to get rid of all of this stuff. So if you look, there's usually a, a, a small peak somewhere near the your, your first peak. And you can see here, we want to set the baseline to the top of this peak. So the area, you can see, is 82,820. So to change that, you go to set the threshold. You can just click start. Just click two places because the table will come up. So now you can change it from zero. And the end time will just say 10 minutes. And this area here is 82820, so we want to change it to 82821. Hit Analyze Now, and all the peaks disappear other than your two peaks that you're looking for, because, because that's the top of the smallest peak. Then you can full unzoom, and you can see that's what you get. So one other thing, you can go to View, mix view and here you see your heat map this is your chromatogram and this is a 3d view you can change where it absorbs at so here you can see we're uh, changing it to 239 or 240 this would be around 270 that's where caffeine likes to it's its maximum absorbance and this is sodium benzoate it's usually around 230 something but they're at their maximum, both of them are, are at the maximum absorbance at around 243. So you can change it there. And you can see that by going down here into your 3D plot, which doesn't look too good, but you can see the overlap in them. And here we're, we can't see it because of our scaling. We would have to change the scaling. So now you can see this is your caffeine peak, this is your sodium benzoate peak, and they're both maximized right here. That's around 240, 243. So you go back to views and chromatogram. Now they're both, obviously you can see now that there's more sodium benzoate than there was caffeine. Of course, this is based on uh, the area but you can go back to analysis and analyze. Your threshold's still set, so 
This is the data that they want. You can right click, go to utilities and print. If it says unable to access the printer, just hit OK, go to file, print setup, and then here choose Acrobat Distiller, hit OK, and you can come back now, go to utilities print, and you can print it as a PDF, save it in the folder that you wanted to, right? That you that you originally chose. So we'll just call this, you know, mixture. Save it there. Then they can go in and save those PDFs to their USB drive and uh, take their data with them. So here as you can see it, if you ever see this, the current method has changed, would you like to save it? Always hit no, because you've got your threshold set at one value, and depending on you know what you inject later, it can change. However, this is somewhere in the method, this is this is fixed. So you don't want to do that. You want to just set the baseline every time. So if it says the current method has changed, would you like to save it? Hit no. And then you can close out. Adobe and Easy Chrome Elite. And then to shut the instrument off, it's just the reverse of how we started. Pump off first, then the diode array detector, then the power. You always want to make sure that there's plenty of mobile phase left for the next lab. You never want the mobile phase running dry. So that's it. That's the uh, instructional video on how to operate the HPLC for the sodium benzoate caffeine determination of an unknown in the analytical lab, Department of Chemistry, University of Cincinnati.